Good evening friends, welcome to my channel Critical Care Basics and in this channel as you all know we are running ECG lectures and this is the 38th lecture on non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. As you all know the last lecture was on ventricular ectopics and this lecture is following that lecture when the ectopics come in a row more than 3 and less than 30 seconds then that is called non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. So the definition of non-sustained ventricular tachycardia, three or more consecutive ventricular beats, rate more than 100 beats per minute and duration is less than 30 seconds. So this is not a very infrequent problem. In fact, it's a common clinical problem. Mostly this is asymptomatic, typically diagnosed on a holter or sometimes the patient has an ICD device in situ and which captures this. The major clinical challenge is to determine if the non-sustained ventricular tachycardia is relatively benign or indicative of increased risk of sudden cardiac death. That is, you have to find out a major determinant of prognosis in NSVT patient is whether to find out whether these patients have some underlying structural heart disease. Diagnosed use and for that you have to use uh, different modalities, echocardiography, holter, sometimes perfusion scanning, even cardiac CT and MRI. The 12 lead electrocardiogram should be assessed in conjunction with these imaging studies, especially when screening for different channelopathies. Now, whenever you see a white complex tachycardia, first confirm whether this is a ventricular tachycardia or whether this is a supraventricular rhythm, supraventricular tachycardia with some ventricular aberration, conduction aberration. So these are the points which suggest that the white complex tachycardia is not a VT but a aberration in ventricular conduction associated with the supraventricular rhythm. When you see visualization of a PAC immediately preceding the white complex tachycardia, you see uh, immediately preceding the WCT white complex tachycardia, you see a uh, atrial ectopic or when you see a typically uh, RBBB pattern or left bundle uh, blind block morphology or there is an incomplete pause that is lack of compensatory pause following the white complex tachycardia or gradually the white complex tachycardia decelerates or slows down and uh, then what is called as a peeling back of refractoriness where the bundle blind block bundle branch block pattern disappears into a sinusism, recovers conduction. And lastly, Ashman phenomena or so called long short initiation of white complex tachycardia. We will discuss more about Ashman phenomena in coming slides. Now, what is this rhythm? This is a white complex tachycardia. So, is it a ventricular tachycardia? See the RR intervals. The RR intervals are changing and there are no P waves. So this is atrial fibrillation and atrial fibrillation with a left bundle branch block. So this is a ventricular aberrant conduction with a supraventricular rhythm that is atrial fibrillation. So this is not a ventricular tachycardia. Now Ashman phenomenon was first reported in 1947 by Gaux and Ashman is a physiological right. It is a physiological aberrancy of conduction of ventricle as a result of change in QRS cycle length. Ashman bit is typically seen in atrial fibrillation or it can be seen in other supraventricular rhythms also when a relatively long cycle is followed by a relatively short cycle. So here you can see it was a uh, atrial fibrillation and long cycle followed by a short cycle and precipitation is what is called as a white complex tachycardia which looks like a a ventricular tachycardia but it is a conduction aberration. Ashman beat is a aberrantly conducted supraventricular beat due to change in refractory period of the conducting system according to the preceding cycle length. Ashman phenomenon can be seen in any SVT. It should be differentiated from what is more important. Why are we talking about Ashman phenomena so much? It should be differentiated from ventricular premature complexes or rarely ventricular tachycardia as the prognosis and the treatment of both differs widely. Entirely different. Most common Ashman beats have RBB uh, right bundle branch block morphology. Sometimes they may have left bundle branch block morphology. <laughs> 
So this is the these are the fish criteria for diagnosis of Ashman's phenomena. It is a relatively long cycle immediately preceding the cycle terminated by aberrant QRS complex. So it is relatively a long cycle length immediately preceding that one which was terminated by the aberrant QRS complex. Right bundle branch block form aberrancy with a normal orientation of initial QRS vector. Irregular coupling of aberrant QRS complexes and lack of fully compensatory pause. Now, once we are sure that this is this white complex tachycardia is not a SVT or a atrial fibrillation with aberration, but it is indeed a ventricular tachycardia, there are four different syndromes which are associated with NSVT. And we should we will briefly discuss about these uh, various syndromes as uh, we may have to diagnose and the treatment may differ slightly. So first is repeated to monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, idiopathic left ventricular tachycardia, third is non-sustained polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and lastly is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So we will be dis discussing about these conditions even later when we talk about ventricular tachycardias but here let us talk briefly just for the discussion of non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. So repeated to monomorphic ventricular tachycardia also called as right ventricular tachycardia, RVOT tachycardia or catecholamine sensitive ventricular tachycardia or adenosine sensitive ventricular tachycardia or exercise induced ventricular tachycardia. So, so many names, same condition. It occurs in young to middle aged people, especially more common 2 is to 1 ratio, more common in females. Most common symptoms are palpitation and lightheadedness during the episode. And most arrhythmias are non-sustained, usually 13 to 15 seconds only, but sometimes patient may have sustained ventricular tachycardia. Bursts of NSVT are typically provoked by emotional stress or exercise often occurring during the warm down. So patient does a peak exercise and when starts warming down, that is the time when the catecholamine, circulating catecholamine level is the highest. And this is catecholamine sensitive or catecholamine induced tachycardia. So that is when NSVT occurs. RV tachycardias usually originate from the septal aspect of RVOT. 60% time it is the RV origin and 28% time it is the LV origin. Usually the prognosis is good and sudden cardiac death is very unlikely. So this is a relatively safe NSVT. This is an example. Sinusism, suddenly NSVT, again sinusism, NSVT. So, bursts of non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. The second condition is idiopathic left ventricular tachycardia. So, VT with typical RBBB and LAFB morphology. As we all know, whenever the tachycardia originates from the left ventricle, usually the morphology is RBBB type. In this tachycardia, you have typical right bundle and branch block morphology and significant left axis deviation. Originate from left posterior septum, also called as Belhassen VT or Verapamil sensitive ventricular tachycardia. So, this is unusual. This is a ventricular tachycardia, but it is sensitive to Verapamil. This VT is less frequently associated with exercise and rarely results in sudden cardiac death. So, this is also relatively safe tachycardia. SCD is uncommon. Although tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy has known to occur. So this is idiopathic left ventricular tachycardia. Now this tachycardia can be confused with supraventricular tachycardia because as you can see the QRS is not very wide. So sometimes you could confuse this with a supraventricular rhythm. What you should notice is P waves are absent. When the tachycardia speed or the rate is very high even in supraventricular tachycardia P wave sometimes may not be discernible. Second point that you notice is significant left bundle branch block pattern, uh, sorry, right bundle branch block pattern, tall R waves in V1 and <coughs> this is often confused with supraventricular tachycardia and the left axis deviation. See the left axis deviation, all negative complexes in 2, 3 AVF and positive complexes in 1 and AVL and right bundle branch block plus left antifascicular block pattern and uh, uh, QRS is not that wide. So, this looks like SVT sometimes and it is sensitive to Verapamil. So, 
many times it is confused with supraventricular tachycardia third condition is non sustained polymorphic ventricular tachycardia as the name suggests polymorphic means different ventricular ectopics coming from different foci so naturally this is more dangerous in the absence of structural heart disease occurs in few settings which involve inherited channelopathies so normally polymorphic vt occurs in patient with structural heart disease but when structural heart disease is not present and this polymorphic tachycardia occurs usually it is due to channelopathies like long qt syndrome or catecholaminergic polymorphic vt or brugada syndrome in comparison with generally good prognosis associated with idiopathic monomorphic vt polymorphic vt associated with increased risk of sudden cardiac death so as you can see many ventricular ectopics come in in a row with different foci the shapes are different so they are arising from different locations and that carries a significantly bad prognosis last is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy is defined by a clinical presentation with documented symptoms of symptomatic arrhythmia and myocardial structural and functional abnormalities localized or there is localized or generalized dilatation of the right ventricle and myocardial thinning in the region of dilatation with typical anatomic findings rvot is replaced progressively by fibro fatty tissue in histology lv involvement is also there but much less common this is caused by mutations in variety of genes of which which encode the desmosomal proteins with greater than 30% cases of familial origin so this is uh, autosomal transmission uh, genetic disease and many of the genes which uh, uh, encode this uh, desmosomal proteins are involved the most common ventricular arrhythmia is sustained or non sustained monomorphic vt it originates in the rv and therefore has a lbbb pattern sudden cardiac death and exercise induced arrhythmias are more common in this right ventricular cardiomyopathy this is the pictorial diagram this is regular broad complex tachycardia and qrs is duration is wide more than 0.12 seconds and see the left bundle branch block pattern inferior axis tall r waves in 2 and 3 biphasic pattern in lead 1 so inferior axis and you can see av dissociation in v1 so you can see p waves which are dissociated with the qrs complex in v1 now what are the symptoms of non sustained ventricular tachycardia patient with ns patient who have nsvt without structural heart disease and with structural uh, with structural heart disease and without structural heart disease mostly patient even with structural heart disease are asymptomatic the most important symptoms are palpitation light headedness sometimes sudden syncope most patient with nsvt with structural heart disease will have symptoms related to the original structural heart disease like coronary heart disease heart failure hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or congenital heart disease so patient will have symptoms related to shd in addition to palpitation light headedness and sometimes syncope patient without structural heart disease will be mostly asymptomatic some people will have palpitation or light headedness physical examination in nsvt could be mostly normal but if nsvt is there when you are examining the patient so these are the some of the typical findings that you, you could see number 1 the heart rate would be more than 100 per minute the physical examination coincides with episodes of nsvt if it the physical examination is the being done when the nsvt is there then there could be evidence of av dissociation in up to 75% of patients there could be marked fluctuation of blood pressure because whenever there is av dissociation the atrial contribution to the uh, lv filling gets impaired and so there will be variable lv filling variable stroke output and variable cardiac output so there will uh, which will lead to the fluctuations in blood pressure same reason there could be variability in uh, occurrence and intensity of heart sounds especially s1 so you could hear cacophony of heart sounds especially when the rate is a little on the lower side slower and lastly canon a waves would be seen when the atria contract on closed av walls due to av dissociation so 
how do we evaluate a patient with non sustained ventricular tachycardia it is usually accidentally diagnosed during some cardiac monitoring once nsvt is identified it is important to determine the presence of any associated structural heart disease so if asymptomatic patient the evaluation for uh, prognostically significant structural heart disease should include a thorough clinical history physical examination especially the family history to rule out any familial condition that could lead to ventricular tachycardia a proper 12 ed ecg transthoracic echocardiography and a treadmill test in patient who present with syncope felt to be related to the ventricular tachycardia or those with strong family history strong positive family history you may need a ct or mr treatment the initial treatment of patient with symptomatic nsvt is a beta blocker both for reduction of ectopy and co administration of beta blockers for any other cardiac condition for example if the patient has coronary artery disease a beta blocker will also help in coronary heart disease the most commonly used beta blocker is metoprolol and carvedilol if the patient is unable to tolerate a beta blocker then non dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker like verapamil or diltiazem for frequent or highly symptomatic non uh, non sustained ventricular tachycardia you may require to give anti arrhythmic drugs and the most commonly used one is amiodarone and lastly in patients who have very frequent symptomatic monomorphic uh, non uh, non sustained ventricular tachycardia not controlled by medications or some patients are not willing to take medications the uh, you could go in for catheter ablations lastly patient uh, treatment of asymptomatic nsvt if the patient with asymptomatic nsvt may also be considered for icd if in presence of structural heart disease for example in a patient with a structural heart disease uh, dilated cardiomyopathy with lv ejection fraction of less than 40% and that patient has nsvt probably he is a candidate for icd as it is many patient will meet the criteria for primary prevention of internal cardiac defibrillator for post mi patient with moderate lv dysfunction that is lvf between 35 to 40 who otherwise do not meet the current criteria for icd if such patients have nsvt recurrent nsvt that could be an indication for eps or icd placement thank you for watching this video uh, if you are liking these videos please like subscribe and share thanks a lot